I wanted to try to be a girl, so I put on these glute, like literal press on nails. Yeah, oh, I was yeah. gonna say, Katie Nolan has black they're long crazy. nails. They're right crazy. Now. And I've been afraid feel to say they're anything. They're wild. Uh, and I tried them and immediately looked down and was like, so no, this is not a look for me. Because I'm, I'm never going to be the girl that goes and gets her nails done at a salon for however long that takes. It's just not me. So I tried the press-ons just to check in on the tech because I haven't used a press-on since prom when I pressed on my little French manicure that I didn't want to go get done by somebody else. Anyway, the tech has gotten better. Still looks wrong on me. Problem is... You do kind of look like uh, like an X-Men villain. It's a Halloween costume. A it looks like I just vibe. took a Halloween yeah, like costume Sabertooth. off. Problem is I scratched Myrtle with them and she loves it. Now, I'm constantly looking for any edge over Dan because Dan is the baby face when it comes to Myrtle and I'm the heel because I am the the one who is like the disciplinarian, the one who says like, no, you can't Bad have cop. that. And Dan's like, take all these treats. Nice one. Pop. This has given me the edge. And so if you've ever wondered how much I love my dog, it's I'm willing enough that I'm willing to make public appearances with ridiculous looking fingernails, which you can't help but talk with once you have them. Yeah, you yeah. a lot of things that you wouldn't normally do. Um, I'm willing to do this and take the hit that it will. everyone's going to have something to say because I know when I get home, that dog is going to pick me because I give her a little Are you going to keep doing it? Yeah, also, these are unhygienic as hell. Because all say, they are for is scratching oh, my dog. I don't think, I've been putting them in my mouth. Don't they have <laughs> like little pet scratchers? Probably she hates those. Oh. But these, it's like my fingers, but better. So look for me with new nails all the That's time. That's actually the nail tagline for that. Just to please my that. dog. Yeah. It's like your, your fingers, my but better. My fingers, but better. Look, there's glue all over it. I couldn't do it These right. are horrifying. Yeah. They're pretty sick, though. If, if I blur my eyes enough, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm a grown woman. But then if I blur my eyes too much, I'm like, oh, I have olives on the ends of my fingers, and I'm going to eat them all at the dinner table. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, the black olives from the can? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Those. Whenever I do that, whenever I put the olives on my hands. Which is a lot, right? Every time I have them right. and you go like this, I feel like an alien. And that's it. an alien somewhere is like, that is now my enemy because she thinks we're just people with olives on our fingers. This may be a terrible way to begin today's share and tell. I cannot actually uh, know for sure until we try it. Mm. But Katie Nolan, what did you bring us today? I brought a cinematic masterpiece that many may not know exists. You can find it on Amazon Prime. It's J-Lo's new film, and that's in air quotes, This Is Me, dot, 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 dot. now. Yeah. Let's take a look at the trailer. I know what they say about me. About hopeless romantics. That we're weak. And I'm not weak. I learned the hard way. Not all love stories have a happy ending. Time's up. Let's pick this back up next week. It's never enough for you. He's a liar. I've never lied to you. And the constant criticism? She thinks I'm her employee. This is me. Being with you feels like home. But I left home for a reason. Whenever someone asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, my answer was always in love. All right. So it's a lot. It's a total runtime, something like 55 minutes. A lot of that's credits, but it's a it's a long music video for the sake of anybody who hasn't seen it before we all praise it. The fact that you're about to try to summarize this is itself um, a daunting it, task. It, so it's a movie, right? But it's a music video and it's selling itself as a, a musical odyssey. Written it's, by? It, J-Lo. Uh, funded by? J-Lo, produced by J-Lo, acted by J-Lo, written by? I don't actually yeah. don't know. Oh, yeah, J-Lo? she had one other person write, but she wrote oh my that. God. Yeah. One oh, other yeah. person. I, I don't know. One other person. A person I'm sure felt empowered to say no to J-Lo on the movie about J-Lo. Definitely. I don't think I heard a single line of dialogue in this f film school project. In this. <laughs> I don't uh, think I heard a single line of dialogue in this 
play in this softcore solo porn. In this softcore I... <laughs> solo porn that feels like it was generated by that new AI that just yes. came out where you put a prompt and it makes a video for you. Yes. That also is being staged inside of like a very expensive Las Vegas hotel lobby. I don't think I heard a single line in that that I'd never heard anywhere before. I know. You feel like nobody gets you. I don't even get me. But anyway, so the, the movie starts with her um, riding on the back of a motorcycle with a man, and then she falls off and she gets hurt. Boom, we're in our first scene. It's a factory. Her heart, which is this big steampunk thing in the middle of the factory, is not is about to break. And it's and a very a, metaphorical. There's a factory line. All women. And, and the big tubes say tear ducts on them. <laughs> I forgot they do. They do. That's my These favorite are all part. important details. And I it's, loved it. we find out that it runs on flower petals. Flower but petals. the flower are all dead and, and J-Lo is dancing this whole time while a song of hers plays. At one point she raps in it. There is though a cast of friends who are like this, uh, it's like if Inside Out, instead of uh, Pixar making that, it was J-Lo and it's just individual representations of what feels like feelings. But they're supposedly her friends. They don't say a single nice word about her throughout the entire film. But so you you meet Fat Joe, who is just Joe in this. Yeah, so doc, please doctor, don't call him Fat Joe. Joe. That's his other life. Dr. Joe Very is, her, different. is her therapist. He's if, if we're taking him at face value as a therapist... He should consider a different line of work. It's very bad therapy. But it's basically- He also takes calls from his wife during their wild, sessions. Wild, wild. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. No reason. He doesn't seem to know anything about therapy. Except that therapists wear sweaters. I do think he got that memo- He had some good mohair. Many times over. Yeah. He, he just wore sweaters and was like, this is me now. So anyway, uh, J-Lo goes to the therapist and then we go see another relationship of hers. And this time she's in an all glass house and this guy drinks comically out of a bottle and is uh, what appears to be abusive. And then you see that other relationships are happening in this glass house and they're also going they're through the They're all tied abusive. together. And this is also a dance. So sort of her. physically Sort of attached. a cool dance with a rope. Right. Yeah. And, and Charlotte, <laughs> as this film's biggest fan, enjoyed this scene. Let me and talk to me. Love you. you know why I think I'm why I'm inclined to defend J Lo because mm -hmm. I loved her halftime show so much and mm -hmm. I loved the doc about it that I'm so excited we get another J Lo doc because she's just intense and she's going through it all the time and you're just right there with her you're like oh my god J Lo I don't know why you're making this movie either because I watched the trailer for the doc and now I need it I need I it. need the doc. So, For those who don't know, a doc about the movie is coming out at the end of the month. Um, that I would watch. Which, I'd watch a documentary. Just to be very clear about this, there is a documentary, a making of documentary, about a film that is about the making of Jennifer Lopez's life. Mm -hmm. And so I just want a documentary about the making of documentary. I want right. this to be a Russian nesting doll. A mirror, of, a of hall works. of mirrors of yes. J-Lo. Which I think was a scene Which I think in is this actually, movie. Uh, yes, yeah. it also is definitely a room in her house. So we should point out that this is also, all of this is J-Lo attempting to basically present a series of allegories yes. mm -hmm. for her real life romantic relationships. Right, mm -hmm. which she deems as her life's issue and the way she's perceived is that she's a hopeless romantic. She's always getting married. She's got a new she boyfriend love. every relationship to relationship. She just loves love too much. Right. At one point we invoke what's called the zodiacal council. I'm going to yeah, say we go that to space. though it's not a word. I don't think it's space. Mm. I it's believe the heavens. it's the heavens. Clearly. It's the heavens. I mean, you go Neil deGrasse Tyson is there. So it's well, he might be in space, but everybody space. else is in heaven. <laughs> but it's a, a council of people that represent the zodiac signs, not all of them. Aquarius wasn't around, but uh, it, it, it's like Kiki Palmer, Jane Fonda, Jane Fonda a whole bunch Trevor of, Noah, a bunch of people that you say, why? And then a bunch of people that you go, of course, a lot of them make sense. A lot of them don't. Um, can we list, though, the potential suspects in this allegory? Because, again, I watched this with my mom and she was yelling at the screen being like, is that Mark Anthony? And yeah. so who are the who are the people who are like candidates for people who don't know J-Lo's whole, like... Uh, she's, she's dated Ben her Affleck, over, Mark her Anthony. Over, 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 over. She's over. dated a bunch of people. She was married, though. The names might surprise you because she was married to someone, Ojani Noah. 
from 1997 to 1998, then to Chris Judd from 2001 to 2003, then Mark Anthony from 2004 to 2014. I knew that was a long one. And then wow. Ben Affleck in 2022. In between there, though, she dated A-Rod. A-Rod. She had the Ben Affleck first relationship in 2003. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there, there was a lot going on. And we see those. She, she takes love. us to those weddings. She takes us through those a relationships. A lot of weddings. The intervention. Her friends have an intervention where they say, say she's, she's a sex addict. And dating think, younger men. How do you think J Lo's exes were anticipating this film? I don't think they, don't they worried about they it were. at all. I don't know that anybody was like, oh no. She needs to give more dirt. She yeah. she really veiled all of her relationships. She bailed so that, them out. Like who's yeah. Derek Hoff in this situation? Right, the dancing the dancer with the stars who was guy shows playing up the role of one of, one of her exes. Her right. Yeah, I don't know. I everybody don't, I don't was left off the hook. Yeah, I do yes. not think that it is a one to one like this guy represents this. So some good things about J-Lo in this. Um, she is... Gowns, beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. Uh, beautiful dances? Some. I think I think she's... I, look, no. She looks I'll great. Say, no. I think she she's an great. amazing performer. Bangs. And she... I, for what she was working with, what she was acting with that she wrote and produced and herself... And funded? Uh, she sort of did a good job. No, she didn't. I think she did a pretty good job. I love that Charlotte is Charlotte as J Lo defense attorney on this episode. Yeah. I wanna I wanna keep on what was your favorite pressure testing her defense of the movement <laughs> vocabulary. What would you say were your favorite types of moves? Oh, I liked the beginning where they're in the steampunk AI heart factory. Mm, yep. And and I couldn't tell if they had sped up the the footage or if that was how fast the dance was supposed to be. <laughs> that was my I really like that. Um, uh, the that yeah. heart was powered by petals. Yes, yes, of course, which, which Tiny had- J-Lo turned into at one point in a Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good type <laughs> moment. That was a pivotal scene for me. I'll also say, J-Lo, I J-Lo, take offense. j Infinity War. I see what I think you were going for when you only have women working in your steampunk heart factory, but I will say everything's going wrong. Do we, do we skip over the part where she's in the Bronx? Yeah. Oh, she goes back to the— I think that comes after the wedding. But no, maybe not. No, it's no, before. I, I think she goes she to the Bronx. She meets her younger self. Did you know she's from the Bronx? Mm. Did you guys know that? And that her old friends say she was never going to make it out of she's there? From, uh, she's from something. Flowers she's don't from grow in the Bronx, the but Q. sometimes they do. Jenny from but the a Q. tree grows in Brooklyn. Sorry. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. But yeah, at one point somebody says, you know, flowers don't grow in the Bronx. And she goes, sometimes they do. Great. And Insightful. then her younger self dissolves. Her longer, her, she sees her younger self. Her younger, the only kind of deep point I believe made in the whole film is her younger self being like, you've always loved everybody else. You never loved me. And she's like, oh my mm. God, I love you. Meaning like uh, she was looking for herself and other people and she never looked inward and, and loved herself. And she finally says, I'm sorry. The part where she learns to love herself and that beam goes up to the, and everyone in the zodiacal council says, mm. She did it. Yeah. Nobody says what it is. And what is it? <laughs> I think it is loving herself. Oh. First. Mm. And so to be clear, we're she saying that the Leo. woman who made an entire movie about don't. herself doesn't love herself enough. No, she does now. This is her now. now. That was okay. her journey. I okay. will say, okay. in, in, again, in Jayla's defense, I think there was a narrative arc. And I think it was going from true love with Ben to going through it and not loving herself and picking the wrong guy to loving herself and finding Ben again. Why would anyone make this? They've got nothing else to... They. I, I think she made it because she wants us to know who she is on the inside. Do I think she told us? No. I think she want. I think it's a situation where you're like, oh, in everybody's head, I think, you have this narrative about yourself where you're like, I've been through so much. Mm-hmm. Anybody, especially anybody who's like worked really hard to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like there's a narrative about yourself. There's the bullshit you've had to deal with. There are the people who have wronged you. And and for nor- for the healthiest way, I think, to deal with that is to go to therapy, get it out, and try to move on or continue on. Or, or- if you're J-Lo... You can to depict make a movie about everybody, you doing that. everything, because everybody needs to know everything that you've right. been through. It'd be funny if it make was like... Make a movie about you doing the thing you should just like, be doing so, in real right. life, if which her is going to therapy. in real life were like, so, um, I got good news and bad news. Um, Jennifer is, uh, is very excited about um, just therapy now. Um, but instead of going to therapy, she has decided to depict what she imagines it is mm-hmm. if Fat Joe were her therapist. Mm-hmm. And also, um, it costs $20 million. This is like someone who has to get it all out, and this is like someone who and does the thing that you shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Like she, she, But at the same time, like, I mean, I keep defending. Like, it's, 
it wasn't good, mm. but was sort of locked in. I was like, where are we going to go next? And it, But it also, it made that me a little true. sad that she was so earnest about it. And I was like, we're just going to sit here and be like, look how earnest this was. Because I was like, ah, oh, does she think, like, or does she just care that it makes a lot of money? Does she not care? It's going to make a it, lot so of it money. Is, it's number it is, two. Yeah, it's like a one of the on most Amazon. popular things on Amazon Prime. Um, her I, album sales are already, like, I think strong, mm-hmm. pre-sale-wise. Can we— uh, uh, um, there's something I'm noticing in the discourse the last month or so where the usually you would hear somebody say something in whatever way on whatever feed you're looking at. You'd see your first interaction with a piece of art or something and it would be someone expressing opinion of like, wow, this is really good. And then you'd maybe a couple days later you'd see other people being like, you know, I really like this. I really like Echoes of the same Nobody agrees on anything now. I'm seeing articles come out about like True Detective, best se- best season of True Detective. And then people being like, what? What do you mean? It's absolutely awful. I've seen people be like, the finale is so good. And other people be like, that was the worst finale I've ever seen in my life. People are so, it used to, at least there was like a universal agreement of like, this is worth your time. <laughs> this is not worth your time. And I saw people raving about this. And in like I a was non, non, not in a, in, non, in a in not a the non, way I liked it, right? A non sort of like in think non, piece adjacent, not like through the looking glass. Yeah. They're still yeah. back at the right in yeah. the way that like I watched, I got high and watched The Room with Tommy Wiseau a lot, right? Oh. Like a thing that's so bad that you just find it again right. compelling, yes. and like which is again why I watched this in the first, the J Lo one in the first place. Yes. These are people that are, I mean, granted, a lot of them are J Lo fans who are like J Lo does it again, and you're like does what again? I don't. What are you talking about? She put the pedals back into her steampunk giant heart, which is still not asleep. If Dan said the word Oscar to me, he said he saw somebody say the word Oscar, and I, I refuse to believe I, that. I didn't fact check, and we all know Dan just says things. <laughs> yeah, and fact. He's vase vos, yeah. two different words. <laughs> um, J Lo, thank you for making this. Uh, as much as we make fun of it, thank you for making it. Just it a, it's, just a, a, it's a bonding experience. A yeah. tremendous go to compliment when you don't like something is. You made Always, it. thank you for you making this. this. Thank you for making this. Look, I'm a lady that's not making anything right now. And, and and main reason is the fear of it coming out like this. But somebody's got to make this, right? And and it's been made. And I, the documentary, I will be seated. I'm seated. I can't wait. I need to know. I need to know if the I documentary watch- features anybody going, I told her not to do this. They did. It does. It's in yeah. the trailer. Perfect. It's her okay. saying, why am I doing this? Oh, no, I need somebody else. I need an well, outsider. Oh, yeah. I need a fan. Uh, I need, need, need Jane Fonda, Fonda to go, what need, the hell is this? We need the Isaiah Thomas of this of this film to pop up in the documentary version. Kiki, I love you. You deserve better. I don't know why you... It's okay to say no. No is a complete sentence, Kiki Palmer. <laughs> I hope people go and watch that film now, the 55-minute yeah. J-Lo thing. Mm. Um, the alternative, though, uh, which is increasingly appealing, uh, Charlotte, is the topic that you wanted to mm-hmm. to bring us. I, I want to talk today about doing nothing. Oh, God. Because I, oh, I, <laughs> I have a very complicated relationship with doing nothing. And there's this article in The Guardian um, about this woman, Olga Mecking, who has written this book, Nixon which is spelled N-I-K-S-E-N, Embracing the Dutch Art of Doing Nothing. Now, this is a woman who wrote an article for the New York Times in 2019 about Nixon, which isn't even really— it's tough it's, to say. I wish it wasn't pronounced Nixon. I yeah, be. no. But keep going. It, well, it's very Watergate-y, yeah. I know. Um, she, and she wrote this, this article that then blew up because everybody feels guilty about doing nothing, mm. it turns out. But she's saying that a cure for burnout and for all of the things we grapple with is really to just do nothing. And she's trying to give people permission to do nothing. But in in telling them how to do nothing... She's doing something. She found that a lot of people felt really guilty about that. So she was sort of like, just do nothing in whatever way that means to you. Right, and Nixon means in the Dutch, apparently the translation is, is yeah, to do, do nothing. nothing. Yes. yes. It's very Paul Rudd in Forgetting Sarah Marshall when he's like, do less. The less you do, the more you do. Let's see it pop up. Nope, too slow, do less. Pop up. 
Pop up. Too, you're doing too much. Do less. Pop down. Pop up now. Stop. Get down. Get down there. Remember, don't do anything. Got to do a little more than that. <laughs> but the cha- but true. Okay, but to the challenge of that, right? Like, how do you actively do nothing is the paradox that I think Charlotte is circling. Well, here. so yeah, I am both very good at doing nothing and very bad at doing nothing. And I wanted to know how mm. you guys feel about doing nothing. I think I'm an only child, so I think I had to entertain myself a lot as a kid. And sometimes that was just sitting there and like thinking about stuff, which sounds crazy. It's also why, and I've said this before on PTFO, I don't smoke weed because it just feels like I'm high all the time in my own head when I just sit there and entertain myself. But I also can feel very guilty when I do nothing as, as, but, and then I feel guilty for feeling guilty when I'm trying to do nothing to not get burned out, blah, blah, blah. My experience with doing nothing, I was sick a few weeks ago. I wrote a sub stack about the things I have been doing to try to do nothing because I felt so bad about doing nothing. Like this is inception level Mm. stuff. So it's inception level something. It's some something's going on. And I wanted to know, can can do you guys ever do nothing? Like sometimes I'll just sit on a plane and like not listen. I feel like Katie and I are gonna be very different on this topic. Let's first of all, can we define what doing nothing is? She said not watching stuff, not not reading stuff, not listening to music. Desiring of an outcome seems to be like a through line in terms of what qualifies as nothing. And what differentiates it from meditating? That is also my question. Mm. Because meditating is supposedly thinking nothing. Existing solely in the moment. Every thought you have in your brain, you're supposed to think of it like a car driving by. To be Just fully present, go, not concerned with outcome. entirely present. So I, it, in that sense, I don't meditate. So I don't, I guess, do nothing. Mm-hmm. What was the other word that you said? It was nothing, doing nothing and then... Ro- bed rotting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are so, these okay. different concepts? That so, different. So two separate articles, but s- circling yes, a related— drain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a related something, which is that— And a lot of these articles now, it's funny, like these both came out in New York Times, bed rotting, Guardian, which Charlotte was just citing, Art of Doing Nothing, the Dutch thing. And uh, it's of that genre of article now where it's like, this is a thing now. Yeah. And then it's like the oldest possible concept of like people stay in bed a lot. Yeah. And so bed riding, bed riding is what the New York Times bed is riding, writing about. Very different. Also, I bed rotting. I feel like this is happening because Gen Z on TikTok keeps discovering things that the older generations have known and giving them new names. And then the Times finds out and writes an article about it. So, and Tale and as what, the Times, as times. <laughs> what the Times is citing here is also um, that. There's an old Scottish phrase for spending idle time awake in bed, which is uh, Herkel Dirkling. Okay, and I love that. And I love that. Cozy morning loafing, Katie Nolan, is Herkel Dirkling. I'd like to preface anything I say here with, I have depression. So um, my experience with this topic is not one I think is one you should model your life after. It's not a trend piece that I don't we should I'm, turn into viral content. No, I'm saying I don't feel that whatever I'm about to say is something you should look at and relate to and go, sick. <laughs> I think I have an unhealthy relationship with bed rotting in the sense that like there were, you know, bef- pre-medication, there was quite a lot of rotting in my bed and it was not in a healthy way. It was not in a productive way. It was not as an answer to burnout because I wasn't doing anything. Um, That's why this concept of doing nothing is fascinating to me because uh, as somebody who has defined their whole life by their career, um, I am currently, career-wise, no offense, doing nothing. Um, And so I am sort of through the, not to say through the looking glass again, but like I have been doing nothing for so long now that now I'm on the other side being like, how does anybody do anything? (laughs) How do I do something? Because I don't, have an, I've been doing nothing. I think the vocabulary question of like, are we all searching for nothing as an antidote to being overwhelmed with something mm. um, does presume that all of us have too much something going on. Mm. And I think in reality, uh, we probably aren't all agreeing on what the definition of nothing and something is. And that the word something um, probably should be as dwelled upon as nothing is. Well, the way that I think actually what all of this is about is letting yourself off the hook. I think I think this whole conversation- Which everybody needs to do. Yeah, and it's like you shouldn't feel guilty for doing something or not doing something or whatever. It's like it's finding that inner- 
peace or zen or ability to be like, whatever I'm doing now is okay. And I'm glad you brought up the the depression part of it because I also struggle with depression and anxiety. And when I'm anxious, I have to be productive. And when I'm depressed, I can't do anything. Yeah. And so these things sort of exist in a, and, and I think that's part of where sort of the guilt comes in of like, why can't I control my own brain? But then if I'm in a good place and I'm doing nothing, it feels really nice. So I think that there are very different ways to do nothing. And that's something that maybe this article doesn't fully get at. What it is making me uh, examine more closely is my need to be watching or consuming something and calling that doing nothing. Where I think right. I call, I think of doing something as an output. Mm-hmm. And I think of in, yes. anytime yes, I'm taking exactly an right. input doesn't count as doing something because I'm not. Do, I'm sitting there re-watching a season of a show I like, writing down anytime something happens that sparks something in me. I'm, that's not doing, doing, doing nothing. No, well, that's, that's doing something. Exactly. But, I, but I see that as, oh, I do nothing all the time. I'm always sitting no, on the you're couch doing watching something. TV. But this is why when you say, when you're sort of like tongue-in-cheekly saying like, no offense, but this show uh, doesn't count as something. Um, Publitory finds out. Available on all platforms. <laughs> um the, the way I see this topic is through the lens of this show, which has allowed me to reframe all of this nothing, allegedly, mm-hmm. as something. I watched this Jennifer Lopez movie, and we just got a segment out of it. Yeah, for work. <laughs> for work, right? So for me, I, I feel like the, the unfortunate, if I have a privilege in this beyond, like, thankfully not, not struggling with depression and anxiety in the ways that you guys are, um, which I, I knock on wood, right? I feel like I am compulsively always, neurotically, always um, trying to stay busy for reasons that are probably not totally healthy, mm. right? Like, it just makes me feel like I'm, again, I'm doing something. Yeah. If I'm just like, my, my calendar's full of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm wired that way, um, which is a cliche that this article is speaking to. But it also, um, my privilege in this show is I have a job where I am actually turning stupid blow-off things that people are doing as their guilty pleasure into work. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I guess I'm a professional Hercule Durkler, I guess. That's like a, I would recommend <laughs> that kids out there do that. Um, but I also think that giving yourself, being kinder to yourself yeah. is fundamentally what That's all of these headlines it, are yeah. right? really just saying. Like, stop like, being mad at yourself. I know somebody who just got laid off from a job they'd been at for a long time. And she's already like making moves into her next job. And I, and and I, I tried to say to her, I'm like, just make sure you take like a couple days. You're a, a, a mom. Um, you've got things going on in your, like take a couple days to just be like, well, that sucked. I want to watch a TV show. <laughs> just relax for a sec. Um, obviously, depending on the way the world is and how much money you have saved up and whatever your financial situation is, the advice is always different. But it just was this, it feels like it's the same idea, which is that like, slow down sometimes and feel okay about the slow down Mm -hmm. instead of letting everybody going fast make you feel like you're going too slow. Pablo, do you ever, do you ever get burned out? Uh, We're, we're living that experiment (laughs) doing the show. Yeah. Um, Insofar as like, I am constantly finding out that I like working on the show at night when Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be not working. Mm. And so this definitional question of like, what is something, what is nothing? I contemplated a lot Mm -hmm. because I'm like, I love doing this, but also I feel like, again, I should probably not be doing it this often for sustainability, for, um, the the fact that the pie chart, the pie chart of my attention and my life is probably too much work and not enough family, loved ones. Like I'm probably over-indexing on, like, on the Herkel Durkling of C word. The Herkel Durkling of Herkeling? <laughs> this is good. Uh, yeah, so, not yet. Okay. But stay tuned. I do feel like a lot of this it does have to do with comparing yourself to other people. It doesn't It's everything. like, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's looking at Instagram media. and being like, oh, I just sat on my couch while this person wrote a bestseller and it makes mm. you feel really shitty. But you know what? Nobody wants somebody around all the time. You got to disappear every once in a while. It'll be much more exciting when you show up. Mm. And you know who needs to take that advice? Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift. I know. Oh. She just, go away for a second. She's, she's got to. Go away for one sec and then come back. 
She's powerful enough now that she doesn't have to. I know. And it's just... And I thought you were going to say J-Lo, and I was <laughs> yeah. very surprised. No, yeah. J-Lo's been... J-Lo was J-Lo's underground been making this. She was working this. on this. Yeah. She was nose to the grindstone. I also feel like evolutionarily, if you took an old human and showed him just like what I... Me all day, he'd say she does nothing. I don't pick things up. I don't move things around. I don't work a field. I don't I do not do anything. You don't hunt or and gather. And you, you're over here being like, I work, I work, I work. You're not... You're just sitting there hunched over a computer. No, you're Doing making, nothing. You make, you're both so making ideas. You're both thinking of things. I come on. The be reason, kind to yourself. I think the reason we feel guilty you're is because so ultimately much. we're doing, we never do anything. There's never anything we do. I yeah. farm regularly, Katie. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I you're hoe right. those I rows all I day long. Hoe those rows. I love that. Thank is that a, are you rapping like J-Lo? Um, the fact that yeah. Charlotte has been defending our lives, Katie, yeah. like we're the J-Lo movie, means mm-hmm. we should probably go to the next topic. Okay. Yeah. And that's your topic. Speaking of other people. Oh, God. I want to talk about whether we have enemies. Mm. We know you do. Because I have been developing a list. I can't wait to hear it. I'm, I'm not somebody who naturally has. I, you know, that my, is a big zig where I thought you would zag. Right. You having a list of enemies feels so pure in some way. I, you know, my niece uh, who is nine years old uh, said something. We were at dinner, and she was like, "I've never heard you yell at anybody." I've mm. never heard you yell at anybody either. It would make me wildly uncomfortable to hear you yell. And it. it uh, I did not know that this was a thing about me that was so uh, obvious to others. Mm. Um, it was not obvious to me, but of course it's true. I don't remember the last time I really yelled at anyone. Mm. Um, and so trying to generate hatred <laughs> in list form um, was inspired by this. I have a rivals list. Everyone in the media that is within two years of me or younger than me, I must vanquish and I must be more successful than. I have to do it. They are all my rivals. And the reason I mention it is right now, rising to the top of the rivals list is Pablo Torre, and he will be vanquished. The top Pablo's younger than me. Pablo made fun of me a bit on the show the other day, which only solidified that he is my rival. And it doesn't matter that we're friendly. It doesn't matter that he's always been kind to me. It doesn't matter that I was at a Christmas party with him. I will vanquish Pablo Torre. And then Nick Wright, host on FS1, um, opened his show with Kevin Wilds. Uh, like on Air this. Talent now, which we all know him as a producer, but on Air Talent. Correct. Live from New York, spilled some coffee. So, of yours or mine? Mine. Sorry about that. The show that's going to vanquish Pablo Torre. Oh, come on. Don't put that on the air. Why? Well, I'm serious about it. I okay, all right. If you want to do it, we're going to do it together. All right. That's or y'all. So I'm left here wondering, like, what to do with all of this. And mm-hmm. so I have a list of enemies. Mm-hmm. Um, I put into my notepad <laughs> app. Uh, and so number one is Vivek Ramaswamy. Who, if you listen to PTFO, I mean, hell yes. I mean obviously, awesome, awesome course, enemy, good enemy to have. Yeah, the guy fucking sucks and is <laughs> deserving of uh, of yelling at. Uh, uh, number two is uh, currently Nick Wright. He, I'm like, he 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 asked for it. Yeah, you got it. Otherwise, you look soft. Mm-hmm. So th- so uh, advise me. He's a ri- he called you a rival, not an enemy. Um, I think that's a compliment. You think of me. That's very sweet. It's you the. Could, yeah, yeah. You could always do the like, oh, I don't think of the the, the dumb dumb thing. Yeah, like I don't think of you at all. But but or put them on your rivals list. Whatever motivates you, because all that is is fuel for you. I think it. De- I think it does depend on what motivates you. What motivates me with my enemies? I have enemies. I'm not going to name them because to me, the most powerful thing I can do mm. is not name them, not let them know I ever think about them, and mm. then succeed. Yeah. So it's me trying mm. to succeed as a form of well, try me now. Or getting to a place where I have enough power in this industry in myself <laughs> to not be pushed around by people in the past yeah. who were able I to push that. me around. So I that's that. that's sort of my MO. So I don't even know if I would have acknowledged the Nick Wright. Mm. Can you? Except that you have to because it's content. You have to. Yeah, it's so you, so you need brain. So you need to yeah. walk this line where like it could you it could be a joke to you. What's your relationship with Nick Wright? You're friendly. So we went to this Christmas party. Mm. Kevin Wilds is... Family Christmas party. Mm, I have my invite lost in the mail. Uh, don't I know guess. Kevin Wilds, but my last name is Wilder, so it feels like I should have been grandfather. Maybe that's he sees you right. as a rival because oh, yeah. if he's wild, you're wilder. Maybe just one keystroke away. Yeah, two. This- he's just a typo of you. Right. Oh wait, Wilds. Sorry, math. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I liked Nick. I liked Nick. Oh, oh shit. No, you you can still like him. So once upon a time I was like I would have I would have reacted more like uh I'm kind of insulted mm -hmm. that I'm Nick Wright's rival. Like, what the f <laughs> and now I'm like, Nick's killing it. Yeah. yeah. Great. Like, he's doing, he's, but now I'm complimenting him. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, am I supposed to do that? Yes, you are. I think he was just sort of doing that. That was absolutely mm. a compliment. He's saying your name. He didn't, it wasn't like a Stephen A. Smith video. Like the, the, <laughs> the with the very tracky, carefully placed. Which let me just say, Dan and I like made food and like sat down and like, you know, did the drugs that we do just and watched that. And what a high mm. point of my recent. Literally. But anyway. No one has line read the word bastard. Exactly. Better than Stephen A. But but so that's not what he was doing. He said my 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 rivals or anybody within two to, years of but, me. But you gotta, how old is he? Uh, I So I'm 38. Turning so 39 in September. He is older than me. I think he's Nick 40. I think right it'll age. be my guess. 39? Sorry. I'm so sorry. Ooh. But you still have time to invite what, what me to your month? 40th what birthday month? party. What October 3rd, 1984. He's a year older than me. Yeah. Um, and I'm a Libra. He's September. a Libra. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Mm. That's why you're rivals. Mm. It all comes back to astrology. I, uh, I, I feel like for content reasons, um, and I should not even say this for content reasons, um, I'm going to play this up. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That's fine. I think it'd be fine. Your think face, it's, for, you the, can, for um, the audio listeners, I wish they could have seen the shrug and sort of resigned <laughs> smile Pablo just gave because that was beautiful. I'm it, an enemies guy now. Is it kayfabe? It could just give them, give the people he what they want. He did say he wanted to vanquish me. Yeah. What does that mean? Take up arms. Take away your show? He wants to uh, How wield How do you vanquish sword? someone with content? Yeah, he wants to fucking cut my head off with a samurai content. sword. I have an enemy currently, actually. Who's yeah, that? Charlotte mentioned an enemy that she mm -hmm. refused to say, and I would like her to say it and we'll bleep the name out, but I would like to react to who this enemy is. Oh, well, it's the Kate agent who wouldn't let me bring my fanny pack on as a third personal item, which is absolute garbage because it's attached to me. How does that take up space? It bag? It's only taking <laughs> up my own space. Shirt. What was it doing on the outside of your shirt? Put it under your shirt. She spotted me before. It was. This was a few months ago. Now I have enough coats that it just... Smart. I could just... You know, yeah. It's just like a tire around my waist. But... <laughs> You know, she, at the time, it was warmer and I didn't have my coat on yet and she'd spotted me before mm. I had it. And mm. then, but it couldn't fit in my back. Guys, it was stressful. Um, so that's, that's an enemy. That's a good enemy to have. I also, actually, you know what? At one point I did have a public enemy, which was Ed Werder. Because I tweeted, there was a job opening at Sports Illustrated. I think I remember this. Which is I something don't. I would love to be able to say now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Speaking of enemies. Sure. Uh, thank you to ABG. Yeah. Um. Authentic Brands Group. Gang. I can't believe that's their name. It's so funny every time. It is the yeah. funniest authentic possible authentic name. Authentic Brands the, Group. Or, and they're just a corporate inauthentic brand shoe group. stomping <laughs> out authentic. So anyway, so and and there's a job opening and I, I tweeted it and I think I said something like, if you're a woman or a person of I color especially, reach out yes. to me about this job opening. And Ed Werder quote tweets it. And he was like, oh, what? Like men are, like white guys can't <gasps> oh, be good too. Like, yeah. And then we got into a whole back and forth. I don't think I would now. I think I'd just be like, Ed, knock yourself out, buddy. But I was like, <gasps> the indignant at the time. I needed to cape for journalism and for for those who don't have a chance. And then, and like also in the process, like get a bunch more Twitter followers and yeah, look. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. by yeah. the end of it, it he was getting, C word. He was getting so dunked on that Capitalism I just felt. Capitalism was what I meant. What are we, what does it mean at this point? Oh. Is it? I thought we were saying content? content. Oh, no. I meant capitalism. Unfettered content? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's They're going to bleep all of these. It's going to sound like we're just saying the actual C-words. Right. Word. Anyway, by the end of it, and everyone was like, Charlotte, you're amazing. Ed Werder, you suck. I felt so gross by the end of it. I was like, I hate this. Even being like the main character in a good way on the internet is gross. It's so you disgusting. vanquished Ed Werder and well, didn't love how it felt. Yeah, I didn't. And I have no ill will towards Ed Werder, but it did give me one of the greatest gifts of my life, which was the headline, Ed Wer on TMZ, this was on TMZ, wow. a headline, Ed Werder accuses SI writer of sexism, dot, 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 against men. <laughs> wow. I mean, that with is a picture the, of me and Ed you. Werder, dot, 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 now. now. A wow. picture of me and Ed Werder next to each other. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, man. I remember that battle. It was a good beef. Yeah, so shout out to Ed. He's not an enemy. I have roles I could identify. I'm not going to tell you who the people are, but like I've got a, a, a one enemy, enemy light. Not rival, just a person I don't think well of. And if given the chance to bring negative or positive outcomes into their life, I will choose negative. 
That's mm. this list of people. Is like if given the chance, it's a long. I'm not notes picking app the. I'm not taking the road less track. I'm. I'm going to give them the short end of the stick. One of them is a guy who runs a charity that I donated a lot of money to when I did not have any money. That then when I um got on baseball, he was like, who? He tweeted a picture of us in the booth and said, who even are any of these people? <laughs> that guy. Oh. Uh, then there deserved. was. Then there's a, a a man who I feel is mostly responsible for uh, the outcome of one of my shows no longer being a show. Um, <laughs> he knows who he is, and it's we're not. Then there's actually another one and of those at the a- second stop, and he just got a promotion, so good for him. Um, but again, if he if his path crosses mine, mm. it'll be a demotion. Um, and then there's an X. There's everybody's got one X that it's like I I um no idea where this person is at this point or like what their life is about. I don't keep any tabs on them. I hope it's going poorly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. that guy sounds like a C word. Yeah. An unfettered C word. <laughs> unfettered C word. Um, can you guys help me workshop how to vanquish Nick Wright, though? Like a burn, like a good roast? Yeah, I mean, say something like Nick Wright, more than like Nick wrong. Yeah, that's bad. So don't do that. Yeah. But you could talk yeah, about how his, pile. his wife dresses him. He can't dress himself. Oh. Um, a compliment and an insult. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. What about something good, like that was that was Katie was like ready. I with love that. his wife. I'm like a big fan. I know of Nick she's great. Well, don't let her be. She don't had the Christmas vanquish party. her. No, she had the Christmas party. Yeah. She was great. Yeah. You know, That's I know how you should. I know how you can vanquish Nick. Right. Have him on your show. Actually, that's that feels like um. He feels like Nick Wright is, and I love Nick Wright. I will say I put Nick Wright on my show before multiple people are putting them on their show. So I oh, yeah. don't think Nick Wright and I are rivals. I, but yeah, I will I'm for only, the record, I'm I only also, prefacing okay, that because of okay. what I'm about okay, to say. You're supposed to be my. I'm only sorry. prefacing it because He's of the mean thing I'm about now. to say, which is that Nick Wright does give the energy of come on my show and debate me. Then he's the guy that's like, will he will. He's strong at doing that. Yes, which is he why he can back you, you into a mental have corner him onto your show. Yeah. I still worry you about so? you. I wouldn't want you to take an L, an unnecessary L. Well, I just L. think invite him on for like a f- night time. Katie Nolan might be number three on my enemies list. Marcus <laughs> Jordan and Larsa Pippen were going to be oh. number three. Mm-hmm. Katie Nolan doubting whether I could defeat Nick Wright, that p- ass bitch, <laughs> in a debate. A PAB? He called him a PAB? An unfettered. unfettered. <laughs> oh my God. PAB. A PAB? Listen. You ha- now you have to do it. You don't go into every fight thinking you can lose it? Is that just me? <laughs> I just, every oh, yeah. time there's a possible fight, I'm like, how am I going to fall it's flat like superstars on my face in the dunk here. contest. Yeah, dude. Um, I appreciate how much you worry about me. Yeah. Um, I'm and, like, and, and, go for it, man. Yeah, dude, content. <laughs> it's going to come out awesome. Seriously, <laughs> everybody would watch that, though. I like that Katie Nolan is the gate agent uh, at the... At you the, can't bring that on. You have too my many ego. You cannot, yeah. at, you cannot. And I'm like, do You've got it. enough, sir. That is... <laughs> You've got enough. Too much dip on your fanny pack, sir. What did we find out today? Um... That Charlotte's a big J Lo fan. <laughs> that J Lo is Charlotte's everything, and she believes in the artistic vision. Yeah. And um, and I actually love that for her. Thank I do. You. I I also would posit that the thing you loved about J Lo's halftime show was Shakira. Yeah. <laughs> Katie punctuating her points with a flourish of nails on the table. Yeah, I also like. I'll be honest. I like. Let's get loud. Um, that is a good song. To you jam. know. What did you learn, Pablo? What I found out today is that um, I hate Nick right now. Okay, well, feels and, like a lot. Uh, yeah. like which which camera can I what, can I can I speak into this They're one right all here? Yours, oh yeah, so. all of them. Um, Nick Wright, f- you. <gasps> you dress oh, so much better than you deserve to because you don't know how to dress, and in fact, your wife dresses you, and she's so good at it. She has a store that people should go to in Harlem. It's great. Um, and you are defrauding America because you should look like a f-ing idiot. Wow. And you look like less of one I now. Just hit my he just cut a promo, folks. Yeah. Yep. Um, also, uh, Kevin Wilds, uh, you're a C word. Capitalism. Content. Capitalism. I'm sure. just get, I honestly I love this for you. I'm have I get a rush even knowing that we're gonna be in the clip where I you know. say this to Nick Wright. This Woo. feels like when a poor comic I like being is sitting across adjacent. from Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan's going on some like <laughs> vaccine rant and the comic is just like, uh-huh. 
That's what it feels like. Is we're like just here to yeah, watch. No, what it's is a happening. rush. Oh Guys, my god. I can't stop smiling. Good. Look at yeah, you. Yeah, it looked like it felt really good. I'm really happy for you. I hey, think I think hate is gonna work for me as this a year, 2024. Strategy. Choosing hate, you know. Yeah. Forget love. This, what did J Lo you know teach what? you? It's not really worth anything. Love yourself. Hate everybody else. It don't cost a thing. This is me. Now. <laughs> what is this show? I don't know. What is this show and who's watching it? It felt good. This is, But uh, this is why this, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> what the f*** is this? Uh, and do people like it? Yeah. Good. I like doing it. Somehow, so somehow I they do. It. I love yeah. doing this. I love doing it. I feel like Charlotte somehow has mentally uh, evacuated the premises. <laughs> she ran. It's the nicest she way ran. anyone's ever been <laughs> like, her, what she the clocked. F- is wrong with you? <laughs> you know what? I bet it was a, an, in, an internal six o'clock timer because uh, my dog has that. No offense. My dog, when it's uh, yeah, time we're for very dinner. Similar. We talk about it all the time. When it's time for dinner, Myrtle's like, it is time. And she always gets the time right. I feel like your brain's like, it's six. Goodbye. I'm goodbye. When she started doing this, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what that. This is why I don't smoke weed, though, guys. You just yeah, saw it, and I'm so yeah. I li- I, wish. I want to smoke I what's inside piece. of your brain. I, that's what I'm crazy. saying. Guys, I would like to get it high on crazy. your supply. It is crazy in here. Yeah. I can't express that enough. Yeah. You know, in your you know, in your high school yearbook, people are like, "Lalas, love me, love me like a sister, never change." I'm like, I have tried. Hags. I've tried to change. I can't. Yeah. This is what we're, this is, I'm even medicated. This like, is you now, is what you're this saying. Is me I mean, now. guys, I think what we're learning is actually JLo's brilliant. And that everything keeps coming back to like, this, this is, is me, me now. now. That's, I'm going to keep, I can make, I, I, I like, can't stop thinking about when I could say that. Yeah. You've said it too many so times. So many times. So many today. times. Although I, I will say, calling it softcore solo porn is. Is yeah. to me, it is exactly what it is. It's a lady masturbating, but you don't see any of the good stuff. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so that was just practice. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And three, two, two one. one. This has been Pablo Torre Finds Out, a Metal Arc Media production. And I'll talk to you next time. Usually the way that I like to work is I ask the player, just throw me your shot. Yeah. So I know. This is the most what, humiliating what part potentially, <laughs> is I reveal what me. it is that I'm here uh, to do. Um, so we're standing in front of, I don't even, it, the, the bowling rack. Sure, ball return. Very confident in all of these terms. So, so I'm going to select the ball, if you're small, big, medium, large, extra large. So what we're going to do yeah. is I believe you could probably take the green ball. Okay, that's a large. You could even take mine if you wanted to. Whoa. I think you could. Okay, all right. This, is, this is not all a thing right. that I expected to be given the privilege. Touch my ball, mate. You can touch my ball. Yo, okay, so this all is right. very, very heavy. It says absolute power. That's the name of the ball. With various lightning uh, iconography on it. Yeah. So um, that this is my sponsor's oh my equipment. And I'm noticing that there are two holes. Two holes, no thumb hole. Th- no thumb. Right. And we're going to use our two middle fingers. Yeah. Like this. Perfect. So okay. stick them in. Ring and middle in Perfect. there. Okay. Now this hand yep. is going to essentially cradle the ball. So hold it by your waist yeah. with your hand underneath it. Yep, cradling balls. That's yep. it. I yep. kind of want you to on, on stand on the side a little bit. Yep. And then just kind of rock it. Just yep. kind of rock it. And so that natural rock that you're doing right now is going to generate rotation. Yeah. When you let it go, you're actually gonna hook the ball yep. if you do it like okay. that. Okay. Go and throw a shot. Let me just see what we're working with, Jesus and then we'll Christ. figure stuff okay, out. Okay, here we go. All right. There you go. It's not bad. It, it's, okay, it's now, bad. Now, all right. To so be it's very bad. clear, it went into the gutter. Yeah. Okay, it's bad. So it was not bad. bad for like until it was bad. I'm getting flashbacks to various things in my life that have involved a lot of this vocabulary. But yeah, <laughs> when was the last time that specific ball has ever touched a gutter? It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It's been a little while. How deep should my fingers be in these holes? Well, your fingers and my fingers are different size. Yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. the holes, this is designed for me. Yeah.
I can't remember the last time someone stuck their fingers in my ball. So this is a privilege. Yeah, and it's very uncomfortable for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna be gentle. Okay, thank you. Okay, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so stick them in. Yeah, gently. They're in there for okay. the for the podcast audience. Now they're in there. All right, try it again. Yeah, Don't okay. have to throw it too hard. Yep. Just kind of roll it through there. Be gentle yep. with okay. it. Little outside, a little, but we have an improvement. <laughs>